Hello, everyone. My name is Crimson Duvall, and today we're going to be talking about paint pouring, and it's really fun. If anybody has ever done it before, you know what I'm talking about. So um, I'm going to get right to it because I have a lot of techniques I want to share today. And um, if you have any questions, make sure you send them in, and we'll have a moderator, and we'll just get to going. The first technique I want to I want to talk about are um, the dirty pour. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you that we're we're dealing with our deco art ready to a fluid art ready to pour paint and they are amazing. Um, you can pour them straight out of the bottle and you can do all these techniques with them and they're fast, they're, there's no mixing um, and they're super easy and fun to play with. So um, the dirty pour is the first one I want to talk about and it's usually um, the most uh, popular pour I'd say you would, you're going to pour in a cup. So you would pour the paint in a cup and then you flip it over. I'm going to show an example of a piece right here. Let's see. This isn't showing. I don't know if you can see. I did it on a charger. I masked off this side with a gold charger, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. And it's a super fun way to spruce up a plain dollar charger. Do you want to be switched to the other camera, Crimson? I'm um, sure. Then you can see switch the to the overhead. That would be great. Okay. Yeah, there, I can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> okay, so I save time. I already masked this off with masking tape. And so what we're going to do, I've picked out some colors, and it's always good to pour with, I'd say, three or more colors. And with this one, I've done six colors, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and the, the order that you pour them in um, does matter. The last color that you put in will be the, the top one, so just be aware of that. I'll just start pouring these, and you can see. Do a little bit of that one. Can you see that, guys? And I'm just layering the colors. It's great because there's no mixing, like I said. So I picked colors that would go good with the gold shimmery when I take the, the tape off. And so you'll be able to see with this one, you're going to flip the cup over like so, move it around a little bit, and then you're going to be able to move it around, y'all can see how I'm moving the paint around. And it depends on, you know, how big your piece is, how much paint you'll use, and that's a learning curve. You'll figure it out, and you can always add, like if you didn't pour enough, you can add more to the, the cup and just re-pour it. And remember, you get it where you like. There's a little spot, so I can just add a little bit more there. Y'all can see that. I like how that's doing those, all those different lines. And so when I get the way I like it, then I will just lay it flat and let it dry. Now, with when you're doing masking, you want to let it set up a little bit, just enough. You don't want to let it dry completely, but let it set up enough so when you're pulling your tape off, it's not going to mess up your, your line. So there's that one. Over here, that way. Maybe get rid of that. So then the next one, we're going to do a circle pour. So it would be like this on a 3D object. It's, it's the same concept of putting the paint in the, the cups, but we're going to use it for a 3D object. 
And for this technique, I think it's good to have this set up. That way the paint can pour over the 3D object and so it's not sticking to a flat surface. So this is just a ceramic piggy bank. So we're gonna use, there's so many colors guys. There's like 24 colors that Michaels carries and it's just, they're so vibrant and the colors cover so well. That one wasn't mixed. You can see. Are you able to see that? There we go. And I wanted to show this way with the, the draining onto the, the board to show you the other techniques coming up that you can use the leftover paint, that way you're not wasting paint. So I feel like sometimes that's what I'm, I worry about wasting paint. There's ways that you can use the leftover paint when it's dry and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, skins, they're really fun. It's like one of my favorite techniques. Okay, so with the, the circle pour, you're just gonna start pouring at the top and just move it around. So you get some really nice lines with this technique, I think. It's like a marbled effect. So you could keep pouring to cover the whole surface. I don't know if you can see that some sides, if you like that drip effect, you could leave that on the other side like it is. Can you see that? Yeah, can we show from the front for a minute? Because it just looks so pretty. Yeah. All the colors. So you can think about which colors to combine. And we, we also sell kits that are like a color palette that's already um, put together for you and they're great to make things. Let me put this one. Oh, and another tip I wanted to show is that I'm using poster board today for our, our, our paper just so it looks clean. But we like to pour in these Tupperware containers and it's great for the, the skin thing that I'm gonna be talking later because they peel off great when it's dry. I don't know if you can see that here. Mm -hmm. So pass that off to Paul. Piggy, piggy. Okay. So with this leftover paint, I'm gonna show the next Real quick, Crimson, yeah. are there any colors that you would say don't go together, or do you think that they all can work together? I think they can. If you think about complementary colors, sometimes when you're combining like a purple and a yellow, you might get like a muddy, like a brown. But they blend, they all go so nicely together. Um, I think when you're layering the colors in the, the cup, if you just wouldn't put those colors next to each other. But yeah, they, they all go nicely. I haven't found any that are just, they don't go together. But using this wet paint while it's wet, before it dries, we do a technique called reverse dip. And here's an example of that on a mat. And I was thinking of like space colors on this one. I'm gonna do some, these are a little different, but I'm gonna show you that same technique. And it's really easy. I have a mat board here. So basically you're just dipping it into the wet paint. <laughs> so easy guys. <laughs> and you just keep doing it till you get like the pattern you like. And what's great about this as well, I think you can use your leftover paint. You can have little objects like magnets or coasters just to use your leftover paint with this technique. Crimson, real quick, yeah. everyone's a little concerned about the bottom of the pig. How, how do you actually get the, the flow all the way to the bottom oh. of the pig? You well, explain? yes, with the pig, if you want it to go completely, to cover it all, you just use more paint because it, and then you can tip it up and make the, the pig be covered 
it's it's really I just didn't use enough paint because I wanted to show you the absolute way that you can um, leave some of the ceramic showing. But of course, that technique can work with any 3D object. It doesn't have to be ceramic. It could be paper mache, an old lamp. I'm almost done with this one. You can see. See, I'm just refilling those white areas. Just redipping. You just keep doing it till you get it the way you like it. <laughs> that corner stubborn. <laughs> there we go. So again, guys, this is the fluid art ready to pour from Deco Art. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to lay this. Typically, I wouldn't lay that there, but I want to show you how to do that splatter effect, and it's just what you think it is. I'm going to use some coral here with a brush. So it's super easy. I just like that combination of colors. And of course you can use any color palette to match your frame or room, or if you had a, a theme with a picture you wanted to do. So that's that. Then you just set it aside and let it dry. Pretty. So I'll take this away now. There you go. All right. Thank you. So, again, with the, I wanted to show maybe an example of a painting technique that you can use on maybe a paint pour that you aren't too thrilled with by itself, but you like the colors. It's something called negative space painting. So, you can see in the background, it's the paint pour. And so, I wanted to add the paint on top, and you can draw a design or freehand a design. But I like that. I don't know if you can see the shimmer of the shimmer and shine of the paint pouring. And then you use the American acrylic on top and it's a matte finish. So it gives that nice difference. Okay, back to this. So we have next, I wanted to show you that technique I was talking about with the skins. Now the skins can be um, poured on purpose or they can be cut. This is a dried piece that was cut. And these are so fun. These are my favorite because you can cut them and you can make things or, you know, use them in scrapbooking or make jewelry and they cut very easily just like so, and they're so fun to do. And um, you can decoupage them, it's very nice. But with this technique, I poured them on purpose, and I'll show you, I have some that I, what you do is you'll pour them on freezer paper, and freezer paper, you can peel them off very nicely. So then you have your skin, and I'll show you an example of how good it sticks in it. This sticks well on very smooth surfaces like glazed ceramics, glass. Here's an example of some on glass. And these, like if you wanted to do it for a holiday with holiday colors, you can, you know, switch them out. If you want to make it more permanent, like I said, you can use it with decoupage. Again, the, once these dry completely, you just peel them off and you stick them to the surface that you want. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> it's my favorite technique. That was a quick little thing for you. Pretty. I love these colors. So then with that same technique, um, the puddle pour, let me show you an example of that. Uh, 
No, it is. Here it is. I'm going to show you this one with black and white on a canvas. So it's that same. Oh, I didn't show you this skin. <laughs> I got ahead of myself, but let me show you that real quick. And I'll just show you what I did. And it's the same concept with this. Let me get some freezer paper. So I'll just show you it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you how you do it. So when you're doing those, the skins, you want to do whichever colors you want, and you're pouring on top of each other like that. So you're just layering that color. That's why it's called a puddle pour. And then what I like to do, what's also great about the freezer paper, this isn't actually freezer paper. So you can get your hands under there and move it around a little bit. That's how I got those, those shapes that were more abstract shapes. So then you'll have something like that and then you would leave it flat and let it dry and then you peel it off for those skins. So then that's the same, the puddle pour is the same with this one. I'll show you on canvas. And a good tip for these canvas pourings is if you can see, I've just stuck some push pins in the back and that'll keep it elevated so it doesn't stick to your paper and it can run over the edges. So I'm going to use white and black just to show you that technique. And it's really very easy and fast. Like anyone, any age can do it. And I think it just gives you such a great outcome. You're just pouring those in the circles. And this could work on any flat surface. It doesn't have to be a canvas. And if you want it to stay more circular, you would just add more circles. But I'm going to move it around and get some different shapes going. And again, you would want enough paint so when you're moving it around that it goes over the side. Otherwise, you'd probably just want to paint the edges first and then you won't need to do that. The more um, layers you add, the more lines you'll have in the painting. You can see how fast this is going, guys. That's what I love about these paints. I'm going to start moving it around, see what we got. It doesn't take much. It flows so nicely. You don't have to move it. It really is going over the surface really well. And you can wear gloves. I have gloves, but I forgot to put them on. But I mean, it's, it's water soluble and you can wash your hands and it's non-toxic. So then when you get the way you like it, you can just lay it flat and let it dry and it'll stay this the way you want it. I want my hands off. I don't know, I didn't put gloves on. And I'm going to pass that off to, and you know, with these, any of these pores, if you wanted to add glitter or anything while it's wet, then it would stick like glue and you would have to do anything to it afterwards. Pass this off. Thank you. All right, let's see. So then our next one, it's still that same concept as the puddle, the puddle pour, but I'm going to show you, sorry, I'm trying to wipe my hands off. 
there's three different kind of ways that you can do the puddle pour in a drag. I'm gonna use a tool that's just a popsicle stick. Hey, yeah. What's the dry time for some of these? Um, I'd say if it's a thicker paint, I would say for sure maybe one to two days. Okay. And like just where it's your time. Cure time is 14 days. Yeah, 14. Yeah. A full cure. Because I found when I was um, pouring those skins in my house, it took longer to dry than it did here. So yeah, and temperature. So you just have to, yeah, the humidity and the temperature. So excuse my dirty hands. So. <laughs> So here's just a little tray that I did with this technique. It's like the puddle pour with a popsicle stick. And I'm going to show you that. It goes super fast and it's super easy. And I, you see different uses for it. And again, this works better if it's on a flat surface or if you can dry it flat. So I'm going to show you on a wooden tray. And just a popsicle stick. You can use anything, but the wider that your stick will be, the the wider that your drag will be. So I like this width for that type of technique. I'm gonna put this on. So I'm gonna smooth out the bottom paint with my hands. So with this, I'm gonna use these four colors. And I'm gonna use one color as my base. Oh, this one's not open. So I find that, that it's good to mix your paint really well. If it's been sitting a while, you wanna shake it like vigorously. If, like maybe an hour or two before you're gonna use it. That way you won't have a lot of bubbles. But if right before you use it, if you just gently So then this, let me get off the, I'm gonna have my base coat. And again, if you wanted to paint this tray first and leave that, that paint showing, and then you would just have your paint pour in the center. I just let the, the raw wood for time purposes. So this is why I wanted to put gloves on for this technique because I like to get my hands in. <laughs> And you just smooth it out. Of course, you can use a palette knife. Um, I'm just going to show you this quickly. You do it more precise if you're taking your time. I got some on the side there, but you can see you can move it around once you get it spread out. And with this one, I'm going to be more, I'm going to space them out more evenly. I just love all the bright colors that we have in these ready to pour paints. Literally think of any project your heart desires. So again, uh -oh. I'm just doing that puddle pour technique. Super fast and easy. And I'd say that it's very fun to experiment with these techniques and see what different ways you can do them on a small scale. Like if you just did one little pour on a corner of a paper and just experimented with it. Oh, that one wasn't shook up. <laughs> Tell us about how you're shaking them. Is there, should you shake them a lot or yeah, a little? Um, or? Yeah, like I said earlier, I think you were probably run in here. When um, you're getting ready to use them, um, like maybe like an hour or two before, you shake them vigorously. Make sure it's all mixed up very good. And then right before you're getting ready to pour, you do it more gently. That way you won't have a lot of bubbles. But if you get bubbles, you know, you could just blow on them. 
my pop. Not big deal. <laughs> And again, you could layer more colors if you wanted. I like how those colors are going together. So with, and you could leave it like that. I kind of like the circles, but um, if you want to do the drag technique, what I do is I just kind of start and pull through like that. And depending on what colors you use, it might look more like a peacock feather, like a leaf or lily pad. You see, I'm just pulling in different directions just to give it interest like that. See, that was super fast. Now you just let it dry. Like that. And so then with the next one, it's called a dip pour. Now I've done this on, let me find the canvas. It's right here. I've done it on a canvas and it gives you like a flower effect. Um, I think this works well on a flat surface um, just because it, it tends to move and if you're okay with it moving a little bit then it, then it's fine. But I thought I would show it on the lid of a box. And again with the, the wooden box if you want to leave the raw wood you can and then or you can paint it you know whatever colors you want to match. I'll show you the lid. I just stuck some push pins like the canvas in here to keep it off the table. So, oops. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use gloves again because I'm going to spread the paint out with my hands at first. So the tool with this one is you're going to use your popsicle stick and you're going to use saran wrap. Let me grab another popsicle stick. This one, I get another one that wasn't on my list. So you're going to do the, the base color first, like the previous pour that we just did. You're going to get that all spread out. Could you use a brush for this part? You can, but I mean, I think it would pick up too much of the paint. Maybe a palette knife would be better. Mm. Yeah, because you're not really trying to brush it around, you're just kind of spreading it over. It's just, a, I mean, you could also just move it around, but I like to get my hands dirty, so. <laughs> like, you know, if you wanted it to be super smooth, obviously you would take your time and smooth it out. <laughs> There's that. So it's basically the same technique that we just did on the tray, the puddle pour with the drag. So I'm going to show you some colors. Oh, let's see. I've got them out of order. But in this, this technique, like you can see, you want to do more in a circle instead of like the, the linear way because then that gives you the look of a flower. And you could do multiple ones if you wanted. Um, We'll just do one, see how that goes. <laughs> I'm fairly new to this paint pouring stuff, so I'm still excited when it comes out. <laughs> this, this, you really can't mess it up. So, so we're gonna use pretty much the same colors I used in the other one, just to show you. So I have a real creative question. Okay. Um, is this paint thick enough that you could actually embed anything in it, like a 3D object while it's wet or any kind of other mixed media? Um, absolutely. Like, I think when it's wet, you could do glitter. Now, the thickness of it, I would say you would have to, like, say, if you were going to do it in the tray, I mean, you could make it thick enough where it would embed an object, but I think it would depend on the thickness of your paint. I mean, you can see this is fairly thin, so it would be something like glitter or, you know, paper or. But yeah. if you layer it up enough colors, yeah. pour it on enough, you can 
absolutely so like a yeah. gemstone or a little key or a lot yeah or some cool yeah media absolutely that's what's fun about it. it's just fun experiments see what you can get All right, so with this one, I did it one way as well as the other way. And again, if you like it this way, obviously you can just leave it. And then I guess the, the size of this technique would depend on the size I mean, you have to make it as big as your saran wrap. So you wouldn't want to go larger than that because you want to cover the entire surface with the saran wrap. All right, just starting to have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so once it lays on there, you don't really want to move it around. So I kind of have a wrinkle there, but it should be fine. I have a bubble in there. You kind of want to get that smashed down in there so where you're not having that bubble. But you know, hey, it's live TV, so <laughs> <laughs> it's live, right? <laughs> okay. I kind of squished it out, so it's good. All right, so once you get it on there, you're going to lift the corners up one at a time, slowly. So you're lifting towards the center. So it gives sort of like a, a softer effect with the paint. And then if once you pull up the saran wrap, you wanted to move it around as well and get some movement on it. And like that would be a cool, you know, time to add some glitter or some 3D objects in there. Yeah. And then if you wanted to add some paint on the sides or anything. Yeah, it's a nice little technique. How did you think of that? I, I looked on it. <laughs> it's just one of those, it's one of those um, techniques that you see on the internet and people have, you know, modified and mm -hmm. yeah, but the saran wrap gives it that really neat look. It's like softer edges, so mm -hmm. different. Let me grab this. Pass it off to Plaw. Cute. All right, how are we doing on time? Anybody? No? Okay. So with our next pour, I'm going to start doing some direct pour. And these are like, um, I'll show you an example of the letters that I have here. So this is a direct pour method. So that's just, you're pouring the ready to pour acrylic right on top of your surface and then you're gonna move it around. So that's fun and very easy way to do your paint. So I just picked up, you know, art. I thought I'd just show you some rainbow colors. So with the first set, I'll just do like, this is super fast and easy. Like this would be great for kids, this this specific technique because literally they don't like, even have to touch it if they don't want to. So you know, you just pour it around. What would you look for this technique? It's just the direct pour. Yeah, you're just, Pouring it directly onto the surface, so it's pretty self-explanatory. And again, you, to have it go over the edges, you want to pour enough paint on there so when you're moving it around, that it gives you enough coverage. And you could add some of those puddle pours in there if you want. And you could do this on any flat surface. And I'm going to show you the next technique. It's like a, a dripping, the same technique, but just using it as a drip technique. Add a little bit more red. I 
I'm going to put some gloves on for this one. It's going to get messy. I want to thank Michaels for having us on here today. It's so fun to do these projects, and I'm glad. I hope you all are pouring along, or you can watch it later and do some fun projects. So you can see, you can just move it around as much as you want and get, can leave it more horizontal lines, or if you can move it up and down, then you're going to get more movement in those shapes. And you know, honestly, if you don't have enough paint to pour over the edges, you can just touch it up with your fingers, fill in the spots if you don't want to move, mess up the, the lines that you have going. So there's our A. I'm going to set it right here, Paul, and I'll just keep pouring on this, I think, and hand you it all at once. I'm going to switch out gloves, because next I'm going to do our green. I didn't put thumbtacks in these because I couldn't get the thumbtacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to set it up, you want to take it off of the paper, you definitely don't want to leave it on the paper, it'll dry to it. But, you know, even if it does, just take like an exacto knife and slice it. So now we're going to do our, this chartreuse is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> and that with the, the bright violet looks so nice together. Yeah, I love it. Again, there's just so many nice colors. Do we have any paint? You can draw lines if you want. You might make it, the movement different. There's a dark green. How that goes. So you could also, I mean, you could also do this technique um, like we did the circle pour with the pig. You could also do this technique with um, 3D objects. I'll show you. Something in a second. I have over here. It looks like a little dollar plastic toy, or you can get an old toy that the, your kids want to spruce up, make it interesting again. There are. I think this would be a fun like party activity. Oh, absolutely! We can all get together again. Absolutely. <sighs> Morning. You can see you can just pour directly on a toy and get some really cool effects. Then we have our next and last letter of our rainbow. I'm going to do blue. Is our mint color. And so obviously you can, you know, make your color palette match, you know, kids' room if they like pastels or if they like bright colors. That one was not mixed. That was the other bottle. Let's see what we get. Nice 
have those. Okay, let's move this one around. I mean, you can make so many projects with one paint pour, really. Like if you're using the techniques to use the, the leftover paint on the paper, you can just use up all that paint. There's our T. Then that was just a fast little project to go in your art room or in a classroom. A teacher wanted to decorate her classroom. I'll hand those off. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And so then with our next one, I'm going to show you that same direct pour on a like on a sketchbook and it's just like the drip technique so it just looks like it's dripped down and that's basically what it what I did is I just stripped the paint down purposefully on a sketchbook it gives a really cool effect I'm going to show you that and what I did to prep this sketchbook just so you're not I mean you don't have to do this but that way you're not getting paint on any of the pages or any of the back to just I put a little saran wrap around the book and then I just tape the edges. And it, as with the masking tape before, you want to tape that off, take that off before it dries completely. That way it's not hard to get off. Hey, quick question. Yeah. If someone wanted to add glitter to the fluid art ready to pour, is it better to sprinkle it on after or because it gets lost in the opacity of the color or can you put glitter or an additive like that in the, the actual fluid art ready to pour? I, I would, after you've got your surface poured and then you want to add glitter to it, I would, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Or even when it's, maybe when it's not just um, newly poured, you might want to just let it set up just a little bit. That way it won't sink down. Yeah, someone asked if they could Depending do it. Depending on how big the glitter is. wanted one color. In, the, in all of it, but only one to have glitter. Oh, yeah. So I thought it would be better to add after. So I just want to confirm. I mean, to do it either way, that, that way for sure, when I take down in the paint, if you do it after, but um, okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay, with this technique, basically the same thing, you're going to be direct pouring onto the sketchbook with the drip pour. I was going to pick these colors. I bumped that guy, sorry if I missed it. <laughs> So this, I taped on this edge just so I can get that top edge to be able to drip down. So you're gonna wanna be working sort of with it standing up. Can you see that? Okay, so you wanna think about how you wanna layer your colors, which colors you want to be the main color to drip down. Let's say I'm gonna start with the mint. You can just start that. So it's mainly you don't want to add too much paint where it's going to drip all the way down. And if it starts to get like longer than you want, then you just lay it flat while you're working. Yeah, so it looks like ice cream. I know. <laughs> Cotton candy. And we have these. And you can really just pick and choose where you want to add these colors. So if you have a drip or something that you don't like, then you can just go back in and touch it up. That's what's so great about these paints. They're so forgiving. You just really cannot mess them up. I wanna move this around a little bit. Let's get some movement going.
mainly you want to keep your drips going vertical but if they start like I said if they start going in a way you don't like then you can bring it back the other way so you still have your drip but you're getting more movement down here so then if you like the way that looks then you can add more paint and go the other way that way you can add to it and someone said this looks like ice cream there and you can just think of all the possibilities and things you can make this. I mean, you could put sprinkles in there. <laughs> I, I love that color combo. Mm -hmm. Pastels. Yeah, I like pastels. Especially on the feet. Yeah. That was just a, like a little fast. Like if you, there's areas where you didn't get, you can just keep adding until you're happy with it. And again, I would, this, what's great about this is you can just set it like this to dry. Or if you don't want it to drip anymore, again, you can lay it flat like this. And that way, when it sets up a little bit, then you can take it where it won't move and then you can take all your saran wrap and masking tape off. That was a pretty clean one. <laughs> move this over. I love when the paint gets on the, the surface like this. And if you're using like a, something, you can peel these off. They're really great to save like for additions to other paintings or journaling. yeah journaling or scrapbooking or anything. Show us that one more time up close to the camera. Just so this one? Yeah. No. I really like how it looks like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> Don't eat the paint kids. <laughs> Okay, I don't know how we're doing on time, but we're, I'm getting through all of these, so that's good. So if you guys have any questions about something you want to see specifically, I think I have time to, to do some stuff that if you were interested. So I'm going to show this last technique with the, with the canvas as well. This one, this technique. Here's an example of it's loosely related to the Dutch pour. So um, you're going to put like white, butt it up against like the colors, and then you use our tool as a straw or a tube or something like that. Or you could use a hairdryer as well. I think a tip with these, with this technique is you want colors that will mix well because you're, they are going to mix here when you blow it. So I love how it gives that little veining there and that kind of help y'all can see that. Let me show you, it's super easy. So again, I did their thumbtacks on the bottom so it's not gonna stick to our paper. So we're gonna do white. Typically what you do with this method, but you could do any color as your base. Cause you wanna coat it really well. I'm just gonna use my hand again. And this um, coating the canvas just helps it even flow even better when you're blowing with the straw and blend with the white. You could experiment without doing it and see if you like it better. There's, I'm gonna waste that paint. Add another color real quick. I just move it around just to smooth it out a little bit more. Okay. So once you get your, see and see how you have that bubble right there. You can just blow it gently and if it just pops and it'll smooth out self levels okay with this technique I'm just gonna do like stripes of color again I picked colors I think blend well together
and it's nice to leave some of the like I did with this one to leave some of the the paint not blown so it's just showing that different textures one more strap we lost the overhead camera uh oh. So you know. Okay, so it's through here. Yeah. This one okay. okay. So I didn't know that, guys. No, it just happened. Oh, okay. So it did the battery go out? Is that what yeah, it I think it is. The it battery's was... low. Okay. So we're going to take it from the front camera. All right. So I. Sorry, so you'll have to kind of look at it. Fine. But my iPhone, I guess, stopped it, guys. I think we lost the, the feed on it. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all can see this. Shouldn't have for just an hour. Oops. Oh, you're able to see it. Huh? I think it was just low on battery. So, yeah. is so, it on? Is it back? I think okay. hopefully you guys can see that. I've got that laid on there. You want to butt up some white up against that? Oh, I'm running out of white. Okay. It's our last one. We can make it. So then you take your straw and you're going to have, you're going to start remembering being a kid going up, blowing up balloons with this technique. But. And obviously it'd be best to put your hair back before you start blowing paint. <laughs> um, well, you know. Okay. Um, and then we're going to take our Hopefully you guys can see that. I love when it does that. Yeah. That's great. That's really well. <laughs> I'm trying not to get my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happens. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm gonna hold it back. Okay. <laughs> so you just keep blowing till. You get, and obviously put up a like a, a wall or something because you're gonna make a mess with this one. I saved the best for last, right? That was smart to save the best yes, for last. <laughs> I totally did that on Good purpose. <laughs> um, hey, can you use a heat gun with this? Absolutely, paint? yeah. And that might be better too. <laughs> <laughs> that to uh, try to bend over wet paint with hair and clothes. And <laughs> but this way is more fun. Yeah. And maybe if you have a lower table, it won't be so mm -hmm. <laughs> challenging. But yeah, you guys get the idea, right? That's really cool. So then you could also move it around if you wanted to do that as well. Yeah. I just love how it blends in that feathered way. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really fun. So that was all the techniques. Um, if anybody has any questions or if they want to see something more in depth, I think I have a little bit of time to answer questions or do something else. Just let me know, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're going to have fun with this because it's so much fun. <laughs> I've got paint all over me. <laughs> you know, just heads up, wear old clothes. And so, again, our ready to pour uh, fluid, a flower, like different than that technique that was, I can try, yeah, I've never done one of those. So, hey, let's do it, guys. Let's see if I can make this up on the fly. I'm gonna move this one over. Let's see, do you have any? Substrate. We find something to make a flower. I someone asked if we could do a flower real quick. Oh, I have a canvas. Perfect. So let's see. Hmm. I think I would do the same kind of the direct pour on the um, the dip method that we would do with the ceramide, but maybe not use the ceramide. So. That's what I'm gonna do. Again, that's that's what's so fun about experimenting with these and just trying to figure out new techniques and way way to do things. So let's see. Let's start with this color. It's a nice color. 
So I'm gonna cover the surface like I have been doing just to cover up that plain canvas. Again, if you wanted to use a palette knife, that'd probably be smoother. And get those edges. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm gonna use maybe. Let's just try something different. if it turns out. <laughs> Someone wanted to see a flower, so that's what I'm going to try to come up with here. Oh, I really like those colors together. <laughs> Again, I've done this before, so I'm just experimenting right now. Let's see, maybe some yellow. <laughs> Make sure that one is. Oh, I missed one guy. Let's see. That one wasn't shook up at all. I'm going to get in here with maybe our popsicle stick and move it around a little bit once I get it all dripped in here. See what I can come up with. Right. Grab a popsicle stick and see what we can do. And if you're, you're doing it and you're experimenting, you don't like the way it's looking, try something else. Just kind of making our lines disappear, but you can always go back in with a little paint. So other side here. I mean, it still looks like a flower. <laughs> it's great. I mean, again, and you can experiment with it. And let's see. Got a little bit of white. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know if that would be a, a flower that you guys want to make, but you can see, you can just experiment with it and see what you can come up with. And if you're like, I really don't like that, then you can try to stick a frame wrap on it and see what happens. But again, with this, with this paint, you know, it's so great because there's no mixing. I mean, you don't have to uh, mix your pouring medium. It's already mixed in there. And it flows so nicely and there's so many colors and you can do so many different techniques. This might totally mess this up, but yeah. <laughs> That's why. It's more like tie-dye now, but you know. It's pretty. <laughs> so you know, there you go. Really pretty. And I hope you guys have lots of fun doing all these techniques and I hope you um, can comment and let us know if you come up with something new. And we're going to be doing some fun projects with, for holidays coming up, Halloween, some paint pouring with eyeballs and that will be fun. So <laughs> I'm excited about that project really. <laughs> so there you go. And then I want to say again, it's just so super easy to use. 
and anyone can use it. You don't have to be. Yeah, and it's available at Michael's and you can have um, the sets that they're already the color palette. So you don't even have to think about that if you don't want to. And it's already done for you. But um, I just want you to say it's, it's just super fun and I hope you guys have fun with it. And again, I don't know how much time we have, but if you have any questions, okay. Well, have a great day, guys.